Hey everyone and welcome to our mini lecture series on the therapies. Uh, today we're going to start by talking about uh, psychotherapy and biomedical therapy and we're also going to talk about psychoanalysis. But first let's start off with an overview. So psychotherapy is the treatment of emotional, behavioral, and interpersonal problems um, that uses psychological techniques to encourage understanding of problems and is meant to modify troubled feelings, behaviors, or relationships. Psychotherapy is basically what your what an idea you might have of talk therapy, seeing a therapist and working through problems, modifying behavior, changing the way people think about their situation. We'll talk in much more detail about individual approaches of psychotherapy uh, and these subsequent units. Um, this approach assumes that psychological factors play a significant role. So the um, psychological disorder that's being treated is um, can be sort of uh, remedied or situation can be improved by addressing the psychological factors that underlie it. Uh, types of people that might employ psychotherapy would be clinical psychologists, counseling psychologists, psychiatrists, psychoanalysts, professional counselors, uh, social workers, psychiatric nurses, etc. Uh, in contrast to this is the biomedical therapies. This is the use of medications, electroconvulsive therapy, or other medical treatments. Um, these treat the symptoms associated with psychological disorders, and the underlying assumption here is that symptoms of disorders involve biological factors. Um, and again, the type of uh, people that might administer this type of therapy would be licensed physicians, and in certain states with certain certification processes, uh, trained psychologists can also dispense uh, medications. So again, yeah, the, the sort of underlying assumption here is that biological factors that underlie the symptoms can be treated with um, pharmacological intervention. So something like an antidepressant or like an SSRI uh, being used to treat uh, depression would be an example of a biomedical therapy. So the two forms of therapy to sort of put them side by side, psychotherapy, interaction with this trained professional who's working with you to understand changing behavior, thinking, relationships, and emotions, sort of holistically thinking about your psychology and a biomedical therapy, use of medications and other procedures to uh, directly influence the body and reduce the symptoms of mental disorders. These aren't uh, one or the other sort of thing. In fact, uh, medications and psychotherapy are often used together and in many cases can produce better results. So the combination of person-to-person -person talk therapy combined with a biomedical pharmacology-oriented approach can produce good results. Um, an eclectic approach can uh, combine techniques from various forms of therapy. That'll make more sense later on in the student when we discuss the various approaches. Uh, the first approach we're going to talk about, so part two of this first mini lecture, is going to be psychoanalytic therapy. You'll remember Freud, most likely, from our personality unit. Well, we're talking about Freud again. Uh, psychoanalytic therapy was originated by Sigmund Freud, and it relies on a lot of those classic Freudian techniques. Free association and transference are particularly important. If you recall, free association is just sort of the free reporting of whatever comes to mind. This can be prompted by giving prompts, or it can just be sort of a free-flowing uh, free association, just say whatever comes to mind. Uh, and transference is the idea of if the therapist is sufficiently neutral when they're exploring these ideas with the patient, uh, the patient may then transfer uh, the nature of their conflict onto the therapist and uh, serve as a means of resolving that conflict. So the transference of the repressed and conscious impulses, anxieties, and internal conflicts sort of projected out onto the therapist as a means to uh, assess them. So this is closely tied to Sigmund Freud's theory of personality, which we uh, talked about. If you need a refresher, you can go back to our unit on personality and look at the uh, Freudian psychology bit. Um, psychoanalysis, uh, and similar to the personality theory, is used to uncover unconscious conflicts. From the Freudian perspective, most psychological problems arise from a, uh, a place of a repressed psychological conflict. And this has to do with the developmental stages, as well as um, things like defense mechanisms and coping strategies. So a excuse me, a psychoanalyst might use techniques and analyses to unearth these repressed memories, things like free association, uh, dream interpretation, right? So the interpretation of the latent content of dreams, uh, transference, which we have already discussed, and resistance. Resistance is the idea that if uh, the patient has sort of difficulty talking about something or is resistant to speaking about it, having trouble articulating, um, that is an indication that they're about to have a breakthrough. So resistance is a sign 
that therapy is going well. So uh, one of the major drawbacks of a traditional psychoanalytic therapy session is it's extremely protracted and long. Uh, getting to trust the therapist and to be able to project onto them and um, to have the time to free associate and sort of organically get your way to the breakthroughs takes a very long time. And both financially and practically, that's not really a, a good system for many people. So short-term dynamic therapies take many of the core ideas of Freudian psychology, but uh, apply a couple of key differences. So they are time-limited and goal-focused. So while a traditional Freudian might want to just sit and talk with you at length about whatever comes to mind, a short-term dynamic therapy is going to be goal-focused. So maybe you have an anxiety disorder and you want help with that. The therapy is going to be focused on figuring out what conflicts are leading to your anxiety issues and helping you resolve those. The therapist plays an active, directive role. So instead of sitting back passively and allowing things to happen, being more neutral, the therapist in a short-term dynamic therapy will be directive and active, trying to push you more towards a, a resolution. Uh, so interpretations used to aid the patient in recognition of hidden feelings and in transference. So instead of, again, being more passive and allowing this to sort of progress on its own, the therapist will be more directive and use interpretations of what's happening to uh, push the, uh, the patient towards a transference state and um, recognition of what's going on. Uh, there's a focus on current rather than past relationships, so instead of digging so deeply into childhood conflicts, there's more of a, uh, an emphasis on uh, the present. And uh, a key thing that still remains uh, the same is that internal problems are seen as the core of symptomology. So while there's sort of a shift in um, the temporal nature, so instead of past conflicts, it's more future or present conflicts, internal problems are still seen as the core of the uh, symptoms. Okay, so that is it for our introduction to therapies and our uh, psychoanalytic perspective. Um, that's it for uh, this little unit. We'll see you next time.